Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Today on the show, we have evidential medium, spirit portrait artist, energy management specialist, teacher, speaker, and writer, Chris Fitting. Chris is one of the rare people on planet Earth that not only works collaboratively with spirit to bring forth afterlife evidence through mediumship readings, but he does spirit portraits and co-created healing artwork and photography. I feel extremely lucky that Chris will be one of the demonstrators at We Don't Die Orlando. That's coming up March 29th through 31st, 2019. He'll be with us in an amazing panel of giving afterlife evidence, help through grief, and how to have a powerful life. You can check that out at we don't die Orlando.com. Now, Chris is called the Spirit Illustrator for a good reason, and we're going to get into that on the show today. You want to check out his website, which is really easy to remember, spiritillustrator.com. Chris Fitting, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. It's the first (laughs) time we're really talking, and we're going to share a little stage together in Orlando. So I thought it'd be great to have you on and find out about you. First of all, where in the world are you at this present moment as we record this interview? Well, at the present moment, uh, I am in Mount Baker uh, in Washington State. Uh, My family has a small cabin here that we ski from often, and it's my getaway. It's my solitude in the nature. It's there's a creek outside and there's trees. And right now we've got about a foot and a half of snow on the ground. (laughs) Oh, it sounds beautiful. (laughs) Right. Yeah, I'm in Massachusetts myself, snuggled under a blanket, just getting over a cold. A little bit of the sniffles, but that's where we are. 3,000 miles apart, but doesn't seem that way. <laughs> no, not at all. It's it's, And like I said, it's a pleasure to be here. I came up from Seattle this morning. I just uh, made about a two-hour drive. And so um, I was on the way up, I had an opportunity to really think about all of the the possibilities that we would be talking about today. And just it was a wonderful time for me to kind of connect and ground um, and I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great. Nature yeah. is something that can ground us all. But so you're in Seattle. I know you do all of these, uh, the spirit art and photography and mediumship readings, but is that your only job or are you employed? Mainstream? So I am, I am a great question. Um, I am a degreed accountant, uh, and I have a small business um, that I work nationwide, and we do financing. So I live two lives. Um, <laughs> one life, I'm I'm financing business equipment for uh, for other small businesses nationwide, and um, I've integrated this uh, piece of my life, the spirituality and the portraits and the photography and the teaching. Um, so they're kind of they're coming together. Uh, they're distinct disciplines, uh, obviously, but um, this is just becoming, uh, it's my passion. So um, that's why I'm here is because of of life after death and spirit portraits and evidential mediumship and healing and all of those attributes that come with connecting in, in this wonderful way. Oh, I can't wait to hear more about it. And <laughs> how, how did you get involved in this? Are you somebody who at a very young age had could see spirit friends or could you give us a little bit about your journey, how you got into this wonderful world? Absolutely. Um, yes, I've been connected um, since I can remember. Um, things would come to me in a, sort of a premonition state before they happened. Um, but it was so regular to me that it wasn't evident to me that it was much different than others. <laughs> um and, you know, I think back now, and it's it's more obvious, but during the journey, uh, it was less obvious. And there are points and times in my life when it became apparent to me. Um, you know, whenever you have someone pass, um, and I've had a grandparents pass, um, and they had come to me in dreams, and they would talk to me um, and provide me with information, and I'd wake up, and i think, wow, that was... It was, you know, it was real to me, so vivid, and the details were so rich 
that I thought, well, that you know, is this my is this my creative mind, or am I actually connecting it? And this was at a very young young age. Uh, and then as I continued to move through, uh, spirit threw more signs at me. Um, I would see events before they would happen uh, with detail, and it was very difficult to explain. So I'm a little scientific minded, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I began to really write it down. Um, what is happening? And you know, is this is this normal? Am I losing my mind at some point? You know, and I went, no. I, I you know, who if if this was happening to me, I wouldn't be so analytical and writing down the details of everything and keeping track. And so uh, I had to stand back from what was happening. And I went and spoke to somebody that I trusted. And uh, we had a deep conversation about spirituality and mediumship. And um, she said to me, Chris, you are a medium. And then I really started to investigate that option and consider, is this, is this likely? And today, here I am. That's this is what I found out. So, so I've always had aspects of of connecting to the spirit world in one way or the other, um, but it became much more pronounced as I began to lo- lose people in my life, and I couldn't explain seeing things before they would happen. Yeah, well, I love that you're writing them down to a good thing, and then just paying attention to what happened. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so sp- it was it was funny. I was. Later on, and, and I had been married, and I was in the hot tub with my wife, and I said, you know, I just had this sort of moment of, of a flash of an idea of a truck having this catastrophic accident, and I could see the uh, – it, it, it was – the way it had wrecked underneath a building in the convention center here. And I thought, you know, it was so real to me. And I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I woke up tomorrow and turned on the radio and that actually happened? And, uh, and, you know, and I just kind of sloughed it off. Well, the next morning I was in the shower listening to the radio and this accident had happened er- early that morning. Uh, very something just almost detail for detail the way I saw it. And I thought, wow, this is, you know, it was so fantastic in my mind that I, I was seeking answers. How is this possible? Um, and so I was connecting to some future probability, um, you know, however, you know, however that works, I was connecting to that to that moment ahead of time um, to see some of that information. And so, that, you know, the more this happened, it really invigorated me to go and investigate aspects that you know relate to entanglement and quantum physics and and all sorts of you know explanations on how this was even possible global consciousness. So um, yeah, it was it was for me it was a real revolution. It was a turning point where I could begin to go investigate. Um, all of these ideas and spirit was doing their best to put roadsides in front of me and lead me and gently nudge me mm-hmm. in directions that would complement it. Aren't they fun how they gently nudge? <laughs> Once you get on the path and you're on it, there's no turning away. Things are put yeah. in our paths. You know, I wanted to ask you with your story, do you know about the book, The Wreck of the Titan, about the ship yeah. that sank? Oh, wow. Uh, I've always had. No, I, I can't say that I do. Um, I'll tell you why I'm asking this, because someone wrote a book about 20, 25 years before the Titanic sank, and it was called The Wreck of the Titan, and it talked about a ship hitting an iceberg. It it just, there weren't enough lifeboats on board. It gave so close a description (sighs) to what actually happened, and of course, it was just a fictional book written. So it's just one of those things. Some Somebody, the author, obviously... I didn't realize it. He thought he was being creative, but he tapped into something because the amount of accuracy between what happened and where exactly it sank, the iceberg, how fast it was going, not enough lifeboats, I mean, many, 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 many things. And it's just, you know, he was tapped into whatever that is, but it's fascinating. Right. Uh, I can... I can understand it, and I think we can see it throughout history. And if we do some self-reflection, there's many of us that have the same, you know, gut instincts or things that approach us uh, before it actually occurs, and kind of gives us a little bit of a, a little bit of a, hey, this might be coming to you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely, I, I, I get that. When you said that, I was thinking of the wreck of the Edmunds Fitzgerald, which oh, I'd always right. been connected to for yes. some reason. <laughs> But, Another uh, big wreck in history. How right. about mediumship? Did you actually train as a medium? 
So um, I have. Yes, I have trained as a medium. Mm-hmm. Um, mediumship for me is um, when it first started, a lot of it was happening in very vivid dreams. I, I used to just tell people about the dreams I have and I would relate to them. So there's – it might be hard to explain, but there's two challenges – Right, so you can be awaking. You can you can be awake and try to communicate as a medium to um, to those who've passed and connect with them, and then you've just kind of got to put your mind in a certain space to be able to do that. Versus when you're sleeping, the challenge becomes not not trying to meditate or bring your you know bring yourself down to that point where you really can connect. And your thoughts are quiet enough that you can hear it. But when you sleep, the idea is, is you're in that state. But it's remembering those details and bringing them back through that etheric you know, world back to, back to this waking world where you are. So for me, mediumship was, you know, was either you can be awake and, and, and work at it. And I have. I've, I've, I've gone to AFC. I've studied with many fantastic people. Um, that really know their craft and, and I'm just so honored to have learned from some of them. And then, and then there's the other aspect where it's, I just go to sleep sometimes and it plays out for me. And I wake up the next morning knowing all of this information because I've, I've been practicing for probably four or five years now, um, really paying attention to my dreams, writing them down, uh, and understanding how the energy of what you're experiencing in that dream state um, how it's the symbol symbols connect and then you can bring them back. So, um, so yeah, so you're, you, to answer your question, um, I deviated a little bit, but to answer your question, yeah, I, I've, I've trained at, um, Arthur Findlay college. Um, I started it with a simple art class and, and my favorite part about this was that I, I, there was others that I just by chance knew that were there and they were working. And so hard on their mediumship to make their connections. And, you know, they put them up on the platform and they were nervous. Yes. And, and you could see it. And I just, it, it, but in the art room, they would give us pastels and they'd say, you know, go out and find three things in the yard, bring them inside, draw them, you know, and, and really just kind of let go and, and stop thinking and start linking. And you'd start to create and you'd have this picture and you didn't know why you're drawing it, but there was no nervousness. And then they'd say, all right, that picture belongs to somebody. I want you to go take that to them. Who do you feel it belongs to? And get and, and explain to them what you've got here and who's coming through. Hmm. And all of a sudden, you know, you're draw, you've drawn a golf ball and a barnyard and, a, and an old Ford Model T, and you're talking to somebody about these things on your picture. And they're going, that's my dad. My dad loved to play golf, and he had the old Ford Model T. And, you know, and the barn, that's where we grew up. And you're like – well, this is fantastic, and there was no nervousness about it. It was, it was so easy to slip into that mediumship without worrying what side of your brain was coming into things, mm-hmm. just opening yourself up for those connections, and that was fantastic. How did that feel when you started presenting things to people and finding <laughs> out that, like, I didn't create this. I mean, this is somebody right. coming through. Right. I mean, I'm being – yeah, they're impressing – they impress the images on us, and – and we relay those to the people. And it was fantastic to understand that, you know, you're making that connection and the pieces of information that were coming through were so evidential. Um, and I say that in the respect that they, they really hit home with the people the messages were for. And it went beyond the suggestion of a golf ball, but the um, – but the details about the ball or the, the Ford Model T or the way the ball was placed on the tee, on the on the golfing tee itself or any of that. So um, you would sh- what's fantastic is you can show someone these illustrations and it's rich with detail that you're just unaware of because it's being impressed on you to do something maybe a way I haven't drawn something before or an angle that's slightly off that I would, from what I would usually do, but has a lot of meaning to them. Um, 
there have been times when I'll get symbols and I'm not sure what they are and I'll show someone and I'm, I'm getting this image and I'm not sure what this is and I'll, and I'll be able to draw it rather than describe it. Mm -hmm. And the the beauty of that is, is they can look at it and go, well, that's the, my mom's wedding ring. That's the top of it right there you're looking at. And, and I'm like, I just had, it just wasn't clicking in my mind, right? That what it was that I was drawing was something that had a lot of significance to them, but they immediately know it. So, um, and, and those are the kind of details that I like, during a reading when it comes through. Um, of you know, course, that's wonderful. <laughs> and it's, um, it's similar to like, if you, if you, uh, have a, if you have a word in a foreign language that comes through, which has happened to me before mm-hmm. is you get this word and it makes no sense to me. And I just say it to somebody else and they know, you know, this means beautiful land in another language. And I think, wow, what a great piece of evidence. I don't even speak that language. I wouldn't know how to say that, but I heard it. And so now I have to let this person know. And I think what better evidence to provide, you know, that their loved ones have gathered close to them, that are they're near. Uh, and they and they can share in that. And it's it's hard to just dismiss those levels of detail. And that's, you know, when I'm when I'm because of the scientifically minded piece of me mm-hmm. that I sometimes have to subdue or push down, but that's always trying to look for the detail to um, provide that sort of evidence. And that's what I love about what we do. I think it's great. Have you always been someone interested in art and drawing? Okay, that's a great question. Um, So my family, there's a line of artists. um, And I've always been given crayons at the table as a child and coloring books, but maybe not more than than the rest of us, right? I would doodle in class because I seem to listen better that way. Um, I draw pictures of my uh, professors or teachers <laughs> to their chagrin. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it was great and sometimes it, <laughs> they didn't think it reflected them, that portrait. But um, so I, I've always had sort of this knack for kind of putting the pieces of faces and features together, but I've never really employed it. It was just sort of this tool in my in my arsenal that I never that I never dipped into. And then when I began to work more closely with spirit, um, it's an interesting um interesting how this happened. I, I'd hear I get features, I would see the definitions and faces uh while I slept. Or when I was doing a reading, you know, I would hear brown hair or I would know that I feel the brown hair. Um, so I started to have an interest in it and really started to develop that piece of, uh, of my mediumship. At the same time, I was also taking photographs with a camera that somebody just gave me. It was like uh, they handed it down and said they weren't needing it anymore. So I was using this camera and I noticed that it, it would take orb pictures. Um, there would always be orbs in the pictures. And I thought, well, this is fantastic. I wonder where this camera came from. Um, I kept taking pictures and I was enlarging the energy of the orbs and I was seeing faces in the orbs and I, and I would describe them to people. And, and sometimes it hit with a lot of success and other times they would say, well, I don't know exactly who you're describing. And I said, can't you see it? Can't you see it? You know, and they'd look at it and they go, well, I can kind of see that. And I said, okay, forget it. I'm going to draw this. And so what I would do is I would take them and put them on my computer and enlarge them. And then I would start working from the imagery of, of the orb uh, and where I saw the face and I would draw those. And I just – I got into the cycle where I was doing hundreds of these things uh, and bringing these through. And it really took my artistic development to another level with the features of pro portraits. Um, and that just continued to develop. And, and from there, I, I realized that there was energy in all pictures, regardless if the orb, orbs were there or not. You could go in. Orbs are like street signs in these pictures. Um, to me, they say, look near this energy. And you can look around it and you can see the distortions and the pixels and how the color changes. And if you look carefully at it, it's it's almost like you can start to pull the face out of it. And you can go, oh, there it is. Um, so there's so much more in all of these photographs that were – that we're looking at and dealing with. And, and I really began to open that up and look into the energy of, of these. And I did it to the point. Um, and I'll tell you this, I did it to the point where I began taking pictures of people and I'd say, bring in your loved ones. Let's let, you know, think about them, ask them to come in. And so I have a picture where I had two mediums that asked to bring in their loved ones and when I looked at the energy on the wall behind them, I said, now I have to remember the name. I said, 
I said to this 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 woman that I knew, I said, "Who's Francis?" Because I saw in handwriting, um, in cursive, I saw the word Francis, and she says, "Well, that's." She says, "That's my grandmother who's passed." Mm. And I said, "And I said, do you have a Paul? I see the word Paul here too." And I showed her. And she says, "Yeah, I see this, Chris." And I thought, "Wow, that's fantastic." So, so we got to a point where not only were as I seeing faces that were a little bit harder to pull out of the energy, um, but I began to get something that was that was a little bit easier to see, which was cursive. Now, this has happened to me on a handful of occasions and I still have the picture today. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where you, you scratch your head because how and why, and you know, I'm just grateful that I'm grateful that it happened because it's, it's a big piece of, of why I continued to develop the way I did and, and had the curiosities I did. Yeah. It's a very exciting path you're on. I just think of, <laughs> I, one time in my life, I was really researching electronic voice phenomena, and yeah, voices were coming through that I was recording raindrops, and all of a sudden I hear, good night, Sandra, you know, it's like, whoa! <laughs> and so I think when our loved ones are, they're probably practicing in the hereafter trying to figure out this technology, but if they can rearrange sound molecules to put voices on a recording, why can't they take the pixels of a photograph and add somebody's name in cursive. I don't know how it works, but I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, you know, it's fun. And I'll tell you something that was funny about the handwriting. Um, you know how everybody has a little bit different signature or their yes. handwriting is unique. Yes. Well, the way that these words, the, the cursive that was used in these pictures reminded me of my grandmother's handwriting who had passed, um, who's visited me and works with me on the other side. Um, and I thought, this is fantastic. And I wonder if there's a correlation because I just thought with the moment I saw it, I thought that really looks like her handwriting. So, uh, you know, these people are, these people that are guiding us and, and helping us on the other side. Um, I think they're eager to be able to help us continue to develop as part of their development. Mm -hmm. And, and it may just be that they're, you know, they're, contributing and adding to to our plan as, as we're working through this together. So I thought that was nice. It's great. I'm just picturing yep. your grandmother. I'm actually picking, picturing mine getting involved. But this is a <laughs> new way that I've not heard of before for people getting through. So it just helps me to think, geez, what else is possible? You know, I mean, just who knows? I, I'm excited about the future because so many more things are happening and and you discovered this is great um i want to ask you just quick about orbs a lot of people think orbs are dust did you go through that phase in the beginning that is this water is this you know right moisture so, <laughs> is this real so let me tell you um how i feel about this and, and let me tell and let me also say first that this is my opinion and i respect that everybody has their own opinions and my ideas and ways are not the right way. Um, they may be the right for me. And if they're right for others, I'm okay with that. Um, because I know that I know what you're talking about and there can be some controversy. And when I first started taking pictures of orbs, it was amazing. They were all over. Here's my deal. If, if there is orbs in a picture, I want to see intelligence. I want people to be able to hold their hand out and have the orb land in their hand in the picture. I want you to be able to talk to the orb uh, with intelligence and say, I want to, I want to see forms of intelligence from them. So if this is my, you know, father, then I want you on the, uh, I want you showing up on my left side up high and I want you to be blue or I want you to move this direction. There needs to be interaction because spirit is smart. Um, and the next step of where we're going with, with, you know, these connections is, is, well, it's not just the next step, but it's to show that intelligence through their interactions. Mm -hmm. And when you can, when, when you can get intelligent interaction, when you're working with spirit, a response in an intelligent way, because they are, then you've got a true connection. Um, are all are all orbs really spirit? No, no. I think there's some dust, and I think that there is raindrops. Now, is it synchronous? Is it is there a synchronicity at play because the orb is in a particular part of the picture, like like a sign saying, "Look over here," and the energy around me. 
And then if you enlarge the energy, you'll see there's color fluctuations near it. Now, has there been a synchronicity that's aligned to draw your attention to a particular part of that photograph so you can begin to understand that there's something happening there? Ah, now we might have something. Maybe there's an intelligence where they're directing your awareness to, particular, to a particular place. So there's that that's going on. Now, there's also with orbs – I've actually got pictures of I've I have a picture of a something to me when I look at it I go that's a face and other people look at it and go yeah that's a face. Mm-hmm. I've actually got pictures of a profile clearly in the orb and it's hard to dismiss. It's you know is it, it could it have been chance that things just lined up the way they did and it just happens to look like a face or there's some other explanation? Well maybe. I mean I'm always open to all explanations. But there are very definitely some – that 5% of the time where you look at something and you go, wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, And then there's also that – if you're not getting that, the other 95% of the time or a portion of that, you may have to say, it's just directing our awareness to a portion of the picture. And I would would tell people, enlarge it. Look at the pixels. Look at the energy around it. In the fabric of the energy, there's imagery and you can pull that out. That's amazing. So, so maybe that's what they're trying to get through to us when they're communicating with, with the synchronicities of that dust particle and where it landed and where they gently nudged it. Who knows? So those, those are my ideas about, about that question. I, I agree. I mean, I've seen – I've done my own photography that I know is dust. But then I've also seen some orbs that blown up and there's a face in there, you know? Right. And just like me recording – raindrops yes i needed the raindrops but the the voice appeared on my recorder so they use what they've got and um and who knows but i mean there is definitely an intelligence behind a lot but i want to ask you when you were were blowing up these orbs and drawing pictures and then you know drawing pictures around it were you actually creating portraits of people that had once lived and have you gone on then to draw pictures of people that you see and do spirit portraits. So when I was, when I originally started blowing up the pictures and drawing pictures, uh, it was a lot, it was a lot of hit and miss about here's what I see. Do you recognize this person in the picture? I'd ask somebody who was maybe, uh, there was taken of them. A person may have been in the picture and I asked, is this a relative of yours? Do you know who they are? And they said, well, it kind of has some features that look familiar, but it's kind of hard to tell. So I had a lot of hits and miss at first. Um, then my development just went to – there was a point in my development where I had gone to AFC and I had worked with one of the people there um, who had actually worked with Coral Polge and some of the fantastic spirit artist mediums. Um, she, um, Coral Polge, is, she's passed now, but she was a fantastic medium, a spirit artist herself who would draw pictures that were so accurate. That I don't know that I could – if I was looking at a person and drew a picture of them, I don't know that I could be as accurate as she was working with the spirit world. Her hands were moving and and she'd say I'd become them. And so I was working with somebody who had a familiarity with her and I had asked them some advice. And they had shown me some techniques on you know, just gently take this color and, and, and work it across the page, but not too hard or not too much. You don't want to – you know, you don't want to disturb the spiritual energy, but just ask for someone to come through. And so you'd roughly, with a very light color, put it on your paper, a rough paper that really kind of the, the pastel would drag as you as you drug the as the pastel along, and it would leave marks and bumps and irregularities. And I begin to stare at it just like I would the pictures, the orbs in the pictures, and I'd and I'd see the face sort of in a three dimensional capacity, kind of almost come out at me. And I, whoa, there's the nose. Oh, there's the eye. And it was, you know, I would just sit there and look at it until it popped out and, and it showed me itself to me. And and I'd just sort of gently trace it. Um, so my eyes were doing all the work. My hands were just sort of following what I saw. And then then that, that process began uh, to be met with a lot more success in terms of people recognizing the faces that were coming through and saying, oh, yes, th- that's my father's nose or those are the eyes of my sister or um, you would, you know, they would all come together. So there's been a process and, and it's it's fun for me because sometimes it's my eyes that see the things and sometimes my hands just get ahead of what I'm doing and it's like they've got a mind of their own. Wow, that's it's, amazing. It's, 
it's, it's, you know, it's sometimes you begin to feel, I mean, you, as you're drawing, you might feel lethargic and heavy and it's hard to breathe. And it's, you know, that you're a heavy, large person and it begins to come. And just the sense of that energy begins to pronounce itself through your colors onto the paper. So there's much more than just imagery that occurs when I do these portraits. It's, you know, there's, there's a lot of information that's embedded in the in the chalk and the movements in the speed that which I'm using the chalk or the, how slow I go, how hard I press, how light I press. There's energy that I'm transmitting that while I'm connected to them, that is being imprinted on the paper. It's not uncommon for the, for things to, if you let the paper settle after I do a portrait, it's not uncommon for me to come back to it and go, it's just so much different than I remember. It seems like it's, 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 just matured or something during, you know, you, you leave it for an hour, it matures and almost changes and, and becomes more of what it was. Um, That's pretty extraordinary. It's a, it's a fun process, right? So I, so now what I do is I take a picture of it after I'm finished, you mm-hmm. know, or I'll um, just to make sure so I can come back and kind of compare the, the subtleties on the color, what, what colors are more pronounced. And, um, and it really works to healing. Um, so when you know if you've lost somebody and you want a connection, and you want a portrait, um, so say there's a you know child who loses his you know father and in, 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 at war and and never had that opportunity to say goodbye, but wants the guidance and the and the motivation and the courage and the confidence. Well, each of those colors that I'm it's being I'm being impressed to use. Those colors are left on the paper so that. When that child needs something most, they can look at that picture and those colors come out and instill those attributes in in the child. Be courageous. Take a chance. Move forward. You know, those – and then you may come back to another time and you may say, I just feel lonely and I need love. And all of a sudden the reds in the picture come out and you're like, wow. And then I feel loved. I feel cherished. So there's a little bit of this connection like it's a portal with the – the afterlife and the people are working in the spiritual world are working through the pictures and the colors to pronounce things, to really hit home with the person looking at them, you know, as if you were looking at a portal through to the spirit world and saying, you know, provide me with what it is that I need at this time. And when I see that happen to the recipients that receive the portraits, I just think, wow, I'm so happy to be part of this process. And it just, it warms my heart. Oh, absolutely. I've been to your website, spiritillustrator.com, and I've seen the portraits and some of the pictures and art. And while they're beautiful, I never, it never even dawned on me this healing aspect or this encouragement aspect, if you need some comfort or some love or courage or whatever that may be. That's tremendous. Yeah. What a gift that you've been given. And I know you're somebody who shares it because you're very busy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure your phone's ringing and all, and all that. And it will be more after this interview. I can <laughs> well, guarantee and- that. Yeah, well, thank you. It's um, we've just you know, we just added a page which I really like. It's become a very popular product, and so yeah, you're correct. I have been busy. It's it's that strictly um, there's a page on the on, on at spiritillustrator.com where it's mm-hmm. just strictly guides that I'm doing for folks, and I didn't think that it would have been met with such success. But people they want to know about who works with them on the other side. What influences, and I have, you know, from a pencil portrait to a color portrait, which is a little deeper, Mm -hmm. to an archetypal portrait. And, you know, which kind of, the archetypal portraits are energy portraits of, and they do, and they're also a portrait of a face, but they're more maybe a lineage or a line of your family. Maybe your, you know, your mother's mother's side of the family, um, something like that. So that information can come, come through and you'll see attributes in that picture that represents that lineage and what they handed down. Um, but, the, but it's a very popular product because it comes with, you know, we were able to be able to provide some names and some, um, how they, how they like to impress that they're near you and what the, it is that is there. Why are they in my life and what are they nudging me towards? Um, so it helps develop a closer bond with your guide. So as you're going through the development process, 
you know, you can go, okay, this is, this is a specialty of this guy that I know, Brian, and, and Brian is here to show me these things. And here's how I know he's around. And then when your awareness opens up to those things and you're paying attention to the fine detail, then you begin to go, oh, there he is again. And I see this. And it just, it just helps because as we go f- through this development process spiritually, we want to know that there's people on the other side that are lending us a hand. And we know that they're there. But when we see, you know, what if feathers or butterflies or rainbows or, uh, you know, those are some of the common things. But mm-hmm. we know there are certain attributes, there's certain um, signs that they'll use to let us know that they're um, that they're near in a song. They, they love to come through with songs um, that, that encapsulate a message. And and every time you hear it on the radio, you know that they're with you again. Um so that's that's also a fantastic way for um, us to connect with uh, the guides that are in our lives. Well, it's so important. I, I'm always lo- well. I always love giving people the connection that their loved ones are around that are no longer physically here. But then it's like, if we don't die, what's our life for? And when we're on our path, and it's unique to each one of us to know that there's these unseen beings that are supporting us. And I think probably most people go through their life never making a connection with a guide. And meanwhile, there's these guides cheering us on. So I think to be able to make that introduction through art, through a a portrait, and, you know, however that turns out, will give somebody more than just this hope that there's somebody around. It's like, okay, Here, I've got this, whether it's a color, whether it's a face, whatever it may be, a symbol, a representative of that. And it's so interesting. Like you say, you start picking up on things happening more regularly and you'll be like, oh, that's, I'm thinking Tom, my guide. I just made that up, Tom. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, yeah. but to build a relationship and one of human beings' hardest things is dealing with being alone and to realize that we're never alone and have these signs. I just think that's fantastic. And I actually had the privilege of a a different spirit artist who is now retired, doing a spirit art after my dad had passed. And I very much believed in the afterlife. But I, you know, we're not going to escape grief. And it's very, very difficult. And I met up with this woman. And very much like you, she's an evidential medium. So she was talking about my grandmother and then my dad, she didn't know anything about me. And she just picks up a, um, her pad and, you know, dad's eyes came out first and then a drawing of what he looked like when he was in the air force in his twenties. And meanwhile, he died in the seventies looking really awful connected to machinery and all that stuff. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's when she said, we get to be whatever age we wish to be. And that was my dad's, favorite age. And then verbally, she came through with so much evidence. And I have that portrait. And it's like, I mean, that's that's one of those holy cow experiences for me. (laughs) And so I've always been, you know, secretly asking, you know, is there another spirit artist out there that I could (laughs) meet and and, and maybe know? And then (laughs) our, our mutual friend, Darla, uh, Takiyoshi, she was a guest on the show. She says, do you know Chris Fitting? I'm like, no. <laughs> and here we are. Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, that's, it's so lovely. And she's such a great person. Um, I'm glad that she did introduce us. And, mm-hmm. um, and you know, one of the things you mentioned, I just, I'll comment on real quickly about the, the, uh, it's, it's, as a spirit artist, what's nice you wouldn't expect is they can, these people that have passed over can come through at any age. And so as you're, you know, you you said your father had come through and he was, I think it was, um, at a, at a younger, younger age, you, mm-hmm. they can be any age that they want when they come through. And, and I didn't realize that at first when I began working with that and until the recipient would say, well, that's, that's my dad, but, it's not the way I remember him in the end. And, and then it continued to happen. And and there was a theme that was, they don't want to come through at the end. They want to come through when I think they were the healthiest and the happiest or some of the best times in their lives. So, yeah. Just great. How about pets? Do pets ever come through? 
You know, they do. Uh, I was on. I was working with Mavis uh, on a platform, um, Mavis Patilla once, and uh, she's so fantastic. I love her. Yeah. She was, and she was moving. She was, she was giving the evidence, and I was drawing, and. And she's so fast and fantastic. And I, I, there was times when she was bringing in two people through at once, and I had my hands were all over the board. I couldn't keep up. I was sweating, and um, and she was just firing off information. And then all of a sudden, a horse comes through, and I'm like, "What am I supposed to do about this?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. And uh, I just trusted. I trusted, and you know, it came through, and it was one of the best. Um, portraits that came through that night and that people afterwards came up and they said i know the horse i know the mark you put on her forehead and i know the mountain that's behind them in the picture oh you gave uh, me goosebumps just now <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, was, I just went oh and i it, it was just it, and it was um that that was one of the most fantastic that was a great evening we had a wonderful time and uh yeah so pets do come through uh there's been cats and there's been horses and then there's dogs um I, I wouldn't say it's my specialty, um, but I, I oftentimes don't know that I have a choice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just sort of what's impressed on me and what begins to come through. Yeah. That's so great. And then at our at our Orlando event, you're yeah. going to be doing something similar. Do you want to just talk about that? Sure. Yeah. We'll be doing, you know, I'm going to be, so it's, it's the same sort of approach where we have, two mediums on stage. I'll be there and we'll have another medium and they'll be doing a evidential mediumship reading, bringing through um, those details. And I'll begin to draw the portrait of that person. There will be a likeness of the person that has passed. So, um, and they may come through at any age Mm-hmm. Um, and I always say when I begin these things, I say, well, if I, if I get the earrings wrong or I part the hair on the wrong side, please don't be upset. Uh, give me a little bit of leeway. Um, but you know, the likenesses are definitely there. Um, and they'll bring through the evidence of, of who it is that passed and we'll real time connect to that same spirit while I draw the picture and the attributes um, and there'll also be some symbology. Sometimes you'll, you know, I'll draw maybe a picture of a tattoo they had, or I'll, I'll get an image of somebody else that was in their life, or, or the tea kettle that was important to them, or um, some significant symbol may a- appear in the picture as I'm drawing too, depending on, on what it is they want to bring across and their messages are. So it's, so I'm illustrating this experience or this life while the other medium is providing the details, and then we'll hand it off a little bit. So sometimes I'll be in the I'll be in the seat where um, they'll they'll turn to me and I'll be able to provide some evidence and speak to other other attributes that came through during my drawing experience. And Jennifer yeah. is going to be yeah, our Jeff. medium. Do you want to talk a little bit about Jennifer? I'm I going to interview. Love to. Yeah. I'm going to interview her in a few days' time, but I would love it if you would just sing her. Jennifer praises. Brazier. She is. She's the sweetest, and she's an excellent medium. She's so fun. She. She's just a genuine person. I mean, I, she's a fantastic medium, and she's very detailed, and I love it. But but she she is such a good person. Uh, I love to work with her. We bounce ideas off each other from time to time. We worked together in the past, and she's very special to me. Um, she's been there for me, and and when I work with her, um, we flow really well together. Uh, she has, she's in Puyallup, um, at jenniferbrazier.com, I believe. And it, she is able to bring through levels of details, um, in certain areas that just make you scratch your head. So she's, so I always love the opportunity to be able to work with her and she's compassionate, caring, and she really knows, um, when she gives a message, there's a lot to her message. Now where some mediums are just about the evidence, okay. you know, and you can show that somebody has passed. She brings through an element of the message that I just think is, is fantastic for a healing attribute. So she's really works in that, in the area of grief and, and helping people, um, just, have more understanding about the process of death, why it happened, you know, the situation and the message that they want to get across. So that's what I love about working with her is, is just the messages are so impactful that, um, you know, not only are you getting the evidence, but it's as if you're having a conversation um, about that person from that person who has passed. Yeah. That's beautiful. And I yeah. can't wait to talk to her. And I yeah. just, I, I feel so honored that the two of you will make the trip 
yeah. from West Coast down to Orlando. And for our listener, I it's spirit art and great evidential mediumship are those kind of things that have you really go wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll they'll, they'll be some magic, trust me. Um, you know, the use, the use of color and running your fingers through it and then having Jennifer provide the evidential mediumship, it's going to be um, – it's going to be – if it's going to be a great event. Yeah. I can't help but think this event obviously is about life after death and helping people through grief and touching on empowering people to live a great life. But Chris, I just get this nudge that we're going to have some workshop together that's going to be more about art. Because when you talked about that you go out and get a few things and draw them, and, and I just think, how many of us would just love to play with that? Would you teach us a course like that in the future? Oh, you bet. I, I, that's my, really, it's my passion to help people get to a point where they're just so comfortable and it's so natural and they're not in their own minds thinking about it, but it just comes out and it's so organic. It's just, it's so free, and, and absolutely, it's uh, we we put on courses from time to time that help people um, with the very thing you're talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's workshops that I've done in the past that are designed to help people get a level of uh, comfort um, with uh, with color and drawing. And you don't have to be an artist. It's not about that. It's about it's about the use of color and just being free and being abstract and um, and and feeling into it and just getting out of your mind. And I said this before, but you stop thinking and you start linking, and it's very natural. I, that really lit me up because I've taken a, a number of courses at Arthur Finley College and elsewhere, and I know within me I have have the potential of being an evidential medium, and I've also been wrong as much as I've been right because there's a fear that comes in thinking oh that person's left, lost a loved one they expect me to say something and so I'm not free I, I don't know it just doesn't work I think when fear is present but give me a crayon or let me know that I can be creative and play I just that something about you explaining that just made me uh, made my heart smile that oh. I, I'd like to do that well, I would love the opportunity to put something together. Well, That's, we will yeah. create that. I want to ask you, too, because on yeah. your website, you offer something called a psychic soul reading. What is that? Right. Well, when we're working when we're working with developing those attributes, you know, helping those surface and, and you working with somebody on their path and where they are and finding their their, you know, their passions, um, because a lot of a lot of times we're stuck. And we don't know what the next step is. And so, you know, a, a good coach in life asks you questions to help you uncover things about yourself and asks you intriguing questions that you yourself have to answer. But we're just not coaches, right? We're getting intuitive hits from the spirit world or we're working psychically with somebody on a deep level. And there, you are here to fulfill a journey in this lifetime. And if you if you varied from your path, you'll eventually be nudged back to the right direction. But there's a period of time in our lives where we may wander a little bit. And that's okay. There's a beauty to that because all things become possible. But helping people find their map, helping them understand their passions, asking them intriguing questions, and then weaving in that intuition gently to give them the nudge in the right direction. Because the spirit world has been trying, but maybe you're raising kids or you're you know going to work or you're worried about gas money or what all of these things that real world life problems sort of complicate your path from a spiritual experience when you do a reading that really looks deep inside someone that's what we have the opportunity to kind of say have you to invigorate them and help those attributes surface so they can really begin to explore and ask special questions and then and then give them that peace deep from within themselves that they need to move ahead and, and identify those things that make them happy. Does it feel right on a soul level? Because your soul can, your soul can send you in the direction you need to go, but it doesn't, it's not going to make you do anything. This things deep within inside you 
are not going to force you to do something, but they certainly will nudge you in the direction you need to go. So on the Psychic Soul reading, it's really about connecting with who you are and where you are in your path and what's coming up for you. Um, and sometimes we get questions about love and career and children, and um, but that's and that's okay because that's part of our path and it all plays into it. So that's really what we focus on is really understanding who you are, who's helping you, where you're going, where you've been, you know, and the reoccurring themes that are coming into your life and giving you these lessons time and time again. Um, they're, they're happening for a reason. And, and how are you coping, coping with that? And that's where – and this is my passion too – is working with the energy management of that. So how are you dealing with these things? Do you have – is it healthy and, and can we plant a subconscious idea – deep within you that helps and assists you whenever you run across this situation that that governs you in a way that's healthy for you, that's your soul speaking to you. So we kind of, it's almost like rewiring, um, rewiring how you're responding to things on a subconscious level when we start dealing with the energy management of you and these conditions. Um, and that, that is where you start to get into some, some really great, uh, learning opportunities is um, is when you begin to embrace the energy management of it. Yeah, I, I dig this conversation. I'm just thinking this is great. <laughs> well, a, as an explorer, I yeah. I love to learn. I love to share. But you've really opened up some things that I'm not so familiar with that I'm really interested about. And I know for me personally, I mean just. I'm a listener of this show too. I want to live the best life. There are times that I feel like, is this the right direction that I'm on? I mean, this, doing this show, absolutely. I'll be doing this forever. But mm -hmm. just as other things. And I just know in my life, it would have been nice to have somebody to talk to and <laughs> maybe go from point A to point B a little bit faster as opposed to all the different tangents I would go on. You know, really to right. look to see what's my soul. Why? Why is my soul here? Why? Why am I here this life, or choose that even? Right. In having those tools and those opportunities, those people to turn to, because we, I've been someone who's who's. I got to a point where I, I thought to myself, if I need answers, I need to I need to lean on myself more, or lean on my guides and, and lean inward instead of leaning outward. But when we start this process, we're looking for answers, and the answers are in books. Or people who've been through the process before. Um, so it's the teacher in me that, that began to come out. You know, um, I, I was looking for all these things. I said, I, it's time for me to create my own ideas. I've got a really great base. And now I need to take those ideas. And, and, and this is where I like my mediumship to go is to become more independent about my thoughts, come up with creative new ideas that I think are well grounded, that take us in new directions, because we've been doing things as mediums, for this, you know, a certain way, particular way for so long, but we need to grow. We need to grow and become creative. And that's why I like the use of color and opening that up and, and really asking some hard questions, creating new opportunities in, in certain directions. So I, and I lean on color quite a bit. Um, when, when I'm looking to get answers for myself, because there's so much in those colors, they represent so much, they mean so much to me. Um, so I have I have really leaned more into my guides in my development, um, and so I do kind of go down avenues maybe the other people have it only because I'm really looking to unfold all aspects of the intelligent spirit world, and I want to and I like the verification of you know the intelligence that comes back that lets me know that they're with us and they're working with us. Mm, I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. And for our listener too, if you can't catch. Chris live somewhere, I do encourage you to go to spiritillustrator.com because you can, you do things remotely. I know you do. Uh, yes. You don't have to be there face to face. And because energy is energy, right? It could, my loved yeah. one could pop over and see you and you could get a face or image or color or whatever. Right. So I'll, yeah, that's, that's right. We'll, we'll do that. Um, a lot of times, uh, I'll have a reading while I'll be drawing and they're not seeing exactly what it is that I'm doing. Um, but I'll show them when we're finished and I always send the finished product to them. Um, we also do, um, we also do another, uh, product where it's, it's kind of, um, an archetypal energy portrait. I'll do almost what's like a chiropractic adjustment, a spiritual chiropractic adjustment. 
uh, using the colors with with them. And I like to do that where they can see it real time as I'm doing it, right? Um, not just send them a picture of it because as I develop it and work through colors and provide more grounding and open up that third eye and 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 maybe uh, work on the chakras a little bit in particular areas to get the balancing. Um, uh, in using the color and, and working with them spiritually um, is is a is is a really great tool to be able to help people begin to focus on some of those those skills that they have that they want to develop and uh, that's that's magic this is this is this is what we're talking about there is it's just really just helping them understand the chakra systems and open up their centers and begin to really um, lean on those um, those those skills. Very yeah. cool. Chris, it's great. Is there anything else coming up besides our trip to Orlando that you want to share to invite people I, to? I thought you might ask that. We've oh, got a couple. Yeah. <laughs> we that. actually, we actually have a couple, um, a couple uh, uh, events that are in the works, and we haven't set dates or time, but they will be on my website. I'll, I'll have them up. I promise I will. Um, we're bringing together uh, uh, a few people um, that will be, and I think it's Illinois. Um, later this year, um, I've done a lot of local events, but I, I promise I'll post them. Um, right now there's a lot of ideas that are in the air and everybody's schedule is very busy. So tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I'm actually doing a workshop in Surrey, BC. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of time off to put a few more of these events and they will, like I said, they will be on the website. So just, I would just encourage anybody who's interested to, uh, to take a look there cause I will publicize it. Um, and you know, it's one of those things I, I'm not very good about self-promotion, um, only, only because it's, um, as mediums, you know, as somebody who's in, works in the spiritual world, I just want everything to be g- very genuine and, and very honest and straightforward. Right. Um, but but I know it's for the right reason. And so I've, I've got to become more comfortable with really promoting uh, for myself. So we'll have those things up. Um, and I would encourage the people just to come and take a look at spiritillustrator.com. And uh, there'll be a list of events here probably within the next three weeks. Um, we'll have uh, some details on some events that we're uh, bringing together. And we are recording this mid-February 2019. Because it's right. possible somebody's listening into. 2022 and saying, right. oh my gosh, there's so much on and more on this website. What's this right. guy talking about? Chris, just before we close, yeah. could you tie in a color right now, tap into that part of yourself and maybe just have a closing few words of inspiration, maybe tying it into a color? Oh, Would yeah. Would you be willing to do that? Oh, absolutely. But the moment you said it, I got goosebumps and I, you know, and so I'm, I was drawn to, I was drawn to purple, kind of a, a purple and a blue. And, and there are so many opportunities that, that we are given here, you know, in this life to make an impression. And when we begin to embrace the knowingness that we have, you know, the colors that are represented from the wisdom um, and, and the knowing. So when we embrace with deep within ourselves and begin to really understand those things that we were set here to do, um, it just becomes simple. It's we so often overthink every little aspect of life and it's just surrendering to the moment, living in the moment. And by by surrounding ourselves at this moment with the purple you know, and the blue and the, there's a purple and blue and I've got this expressiveness that wants to happen and the wisdom that wants to come through. And the idea behind that color or those combinations of colors is, is that it's the surrender into yourself, that higher intuition and that connection, that serenity that you arrive at when you really begin to understand how much and how, how much you really are inside. And there's as much inside as there is is there is outside and there's more inside, right? Because as you begin to explore yourself and that wisdom um, and that intuition, that's where you can find the confidence to move ahead with, with the purpose that you have in this life. I think, and so, and so to bring myself back a little bit, the more we resist, you know, the more we think it's just resistance sometimes in our lives. And the more we surrender to just being aware of, what it is that spirit wants us to do and achieve and going with the flow. They're providing us opportunities all the time. Don't fight it. <laughs> really, really. It's, it's, it's just as simple as this interview. Um, we don't die Orlando. 
uh, many of the other events I've been involved in. These are opportunities that come to our attention so that we can find that piece of ourselves and move ahead and really begin to understand how the spirit world is folding themselves into our lives. So, yeah, it's just that um, – I am so I'm so honored to, that you had me here today. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, and if anybody, everybody listening, could just close their eyes for a moment and and just see that color purple and just surround themselves with it and know that they're loved and know that they're wise and just begin to trust themselves more and more and more and the spirit world that's around them. Yeah, that's, that's it. beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you for being our guest today. I can't wait to meet you in person, although I feel like I've always known you. It's just one of those magical things. Oh, thanks, Chris. You bet. And for our listener, thank you for spending this last hour with the spirit illustrator, Chris Fitting, and I. Um, Yeah, I'm really just excited, not just about the spirit art, but the healing and the photography. Wow. I mean, there's so much that's possible. Just great. I want to remind you, if you haven't, or maybe if you haven't heard this show before, WeDon'tDieRadio.com is the home base for all past episodes. This, Chris, believe it or not, is episode 299. Congratulations. Thank you. We've been at this for just over four years with some really great conversations of evidence of the afterlife. And each interview like this is designed to lift us up, empower us, give us some tools for being human. And this one was just that and more. So I'm really excited. Uh, There's a few freebies on my website there. We don't die radio.com, like my few chapters of my book, how uh, we don't die, a very healing audio, how to survive grief and some other things. And you can also find out more about we don't die Orlando at we don't die Orlando.com. So in closing this episode, another thank you to Chris Fitting. Visit his website, spiritillustrator.com. My name is Sandra Champlain. I'm always so happy to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. So I did just close my eyes and imagine the purple color around me, just feeling the love, feeling the support. And I'll take that on as a practice to remember that we don't die. Our lives are for a reason. We are important and we are special. Most of all, we are loved. So I want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. (music) 